<laughs> yeah, this is like all black. That's a bit better. Oh, I'm NSA key. Uh, if you guys look through the program, you probably saw just basically what amounted to a joke blurb about myself checking on InfoSec news and stuff like that. Uh, I run tour relays and bridges, but something that's more relevant to the talk today, and this wasn't the case until about two weeks ago, I'm actually a Hashcat beta tester now. I get the releases before they go public and help find bugs. I've actually found two of them. Uh, something else, this has nothing to do with anything. Uh, I'm a part-time troll, but I do not work for the Kremlin, despite 20 committees' uh, proclamations otherwise. He, yeah, he actually accused me of being a Kremlin troll on Twitter. It was great. <laughs> okay, uh, this whole presentation is done with Pablo Draw. I drew all these slides by hand. Not all of them are as fancy as this. Oh, it, it's a it, it was a it's a lot more work than it looks. It, this looks like something a kindergartner did, but tr but trust me, th this was a lot of effort. <laughs> I, sp I I only worked on this between the hours of three and five a.m. from November to now, and this is the result. Oh, uh, the weird. J uh, jaggy cat, in case anybody is wondering, or chess piece. It's actually the Hashcat logo done in ANSI. Uh, I think I can quit talking about that. We're getting more people, so I can move on to stuff that matters. Another TV trope. I just had to throw that in. Oh, uh, this is not like perfect 80 by 25 aspect ratio. <laughs> just because I had to spread it out for the PowerPoint, so it's a little skewed. I don't think anyone here will mind much. Oh, don't tell me. All right, uh, some of you may be wondering, just what is Hashcat and why should I listen to you talk? Uh, I should probably explain some of the uh, terms here. Uh, Hashcat is the CPU version. The GPU version was originally just called OCL Hashcat, OCL being short for OpenCL. For those who don't know, it's a way to do science with video cards instead of just playing games. Uh, Adam, the head dev, originally uh, had one binary for both NVIDIA and AMD cards, but because NVIDIA's implementation of OpenCL was garbage because they won't push CUDA, he decided just to make the OCL version for AMD cards and do another set of binaries for NVIDIA cards. Uh, as of when I made this slide, now that's no longer the case, uh, the GPU version supported 141 algorithms. Now it's probably like 150, 160. I would have to look and count again. Uh, stuff, goes, stuff like algorithms being added goes into the CPU version first. And then once it's solid, a couple months later, Adam moves it over to the GPU version. Uh, even though the talk's named Hashcat, I'm just going to be pretty much talking about the uh, GPU version exclusively. I love this slide. Oh, uh, for set, uh, I've got on here security uh, research, whether internal or external. Uh, if anybody. Uh, Watch the uh, from parking lot to server room talk. That's an example of external. An internal example would be uh, Dagmar. I don't know. Uh, there's a few of you in here who know Dagmar. <laughs> I, I, I see some knowing nods and giggles. So anyway, Dagmar told me back in, he's probably going to put his business gloves on and have a conversation with, with me about this, but back when dinosaurs roamed the earth, Dagmar had access to an HP 9000 machine, and he was t given the task of assessing some password security at the company he was working for, and he cracked, I want to say, 87% in about an hour. But you got to keep in mind, that was back when people used passwords that are cited as passwords in hackers. Okay, I just got a bunch of blank looks. 
Raise your hands if you've seen the 1995 cult classic, Hackers. <laughs> okay, do you remember the, uh, the passwords they use, like love, sex, war, God? Probably used really bad passwords like that. That's my theory anyways. When I set out to do this, I wanted to uh, crack 70, I wanted to crack at least 80%. And I, it, I'll get into that later. I'm getting ahead of myself. Uh, another good reason is raising awareness. And I cited here Nate Anderson's How I Became a Password Cracker article. That one's really funny because he stumbled, he had a lot of uh, stumbles that he made until he figured out just what he needed to do. And that article is really illuminating for that reason. I recommend reading that. Before, if, before you ever download and run anything, because you might make some of the same mistakes otherwise. Uh, password recovery. <laughs> I've had to do that before. Uh, th but that was uh, in a different context. That was, uh, I had an old uh, trillion uh, config file on an external hard drive. And ch basically, you can grab a Perl script and figure that out. It goes with a known algorithm, but that's getting beyond scope. Bad reasons. This is the part of the slide I like, and really it could have been on its own slide. Uh, <laughs> account hijacking. Let's say some forum database gets leaked. Somebody like me who's more evil decides, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, crack a bunch of hashes and start trying the passwords uh, with the email service that, you know, the address goes to. Let's say they get, let's say the uh, Joe user is dumb enough to use a single password for everything. This still happens today. I'm, I'm, look, I'm guessing most of you don't do that. I'm just guessing, but a lot of your normal people still do. And of course, once you get an, e once you get into an email account that matters, it's pretty much game over. Oh, uh, accessing protected Wi-Fi. Uh, there are actually uh, there are actually uh, there's actually support for algorithms for cracking uh, Wi-Fi in Hashcat. You just basically have to have a PCAP and run it against that. I've never had to mess with that. I pretty much hate wireless, and if I can avoid it, I just do. And, and, this last reason, RMing script kitties. I pretty much only put that as a bad reason because you're supposed to put it as a bad reason. If you're if you're if you're cracking passwords with the ultimate goal of RMing script kitties, you get two thumbs up from me. That is that is probably the best of the good uh, the good reasons, but it's listed as bad reason because morality and reasons. <laughs> Most of this is a benchmark talk. I've got I've got spreadsheets that'll make your eyes bleed because yeah I'll get into that later. Uh, I used my hilariously inadequate GTX 650 Ti Boost uh, for my graphics card. Uh, the benchmark is just using the B flag with CUDA Hashcat. That's of course not representative of any kind of real world numbers. Uh, do not use pre-Maxwell NVIDIA. You're just asking for pain. Uh, buy cards off of some uh, Bitcoin miner who's gotten out of GPU mining because that's not a thing anymore. Only get reference cards. Uh, if you're, do we have anybody in here? I'm not a Fed, so I'm just asking. <laughs> do we have any? Do we have anybody in here with an interest in Bitcoin? Okay, for you three that raised your hand, did you have, uh, did you ever get into GPU mining? Okay, I see one of you shook your head yes. You could use, uh, your mi old mining rig if you still have it. Uh, toss out the substandard motherboard, get an actual case. For God's sake, get an actual case. Don't use a milk crate for this. Uh, Rip out any PCI extender cables. <laughs> uh, basically, throw out anything that's substandard, uh, and only keep reference-designed video cards. Take the rest of that stuff, put it in a pile, and burn it. 
it's good if you if you try to use it for serious hash tracking, it's going to burn anyways. So you might as well own your destiny. <laughs> oh, I could. I'm go, okay. That mini rant is over. Oh, <laughs> I, I I I had to work trolling Bitcoin users into this. Oh. Uh, I used the MD5 hashes from ba the Battlefield Heroes beta. There were, while there were a little over 550,000 uh, total hashes, there were 423,000 that are unique. I went with that because, let's face it, in this day and age, MD5 is kind of a joke algorithm. Nobody should be using it for anything serious. It's fast. Uh, I could have done. I could have been one of the cool kids and gone after the uh, LinkedIn hashes, but that would have been about four times longer to do, just because Cha one's just marginally better. Don't use that either. If you're going uh, to continue that mini rant, uh, if, <laughs> if if you're not using Bcrypt or some other slow algorithm, go in some other industry, please. If you're if you're a software developer and you actually have to pick the algorithm to use to hash your passwords and you pick something fast and then you get owned, I'm going to laugh at you <laughs> to your face. Oh, uh, worse than uh, using joke algorithms is the Rock You list. That was, I don't even know what that site was for. I don't really care. <laughs> But uh, the Rock U list is uh, a plain t was robbed from a database that had passwords in plain text, and they just they sorted them by popularity. It's really good for just if you need a, a fairly comprehensive list and you want to uh, get the easy stuff out of the way first. It's really hard to go wrong with Rock U. Your alternative would be to grab. Well, I'll talk about the alternatives later. Uh, the other one is Crackstation Human Only. That was a list. Uh, Taylor Hornby from Diffuse Security put that together about five years ago. Uh, he grabbed every uh, known uh, password he could find from other breaches and just dumped them all in a file and unique them afterwards. Uh, the next two entries, Holy Wow and Holy Wow V2, I named them that because of, in part because of the code of conduct for this conference. But Holy Wow was basically my version of doing what Taylor Hornby did five years ago with Crackstation Human Only. And as you can see, I found a lot more passwords from known data breaches. <laughs> 311 million. Uh, Holy Wow V2 is basically Holy Wow, except with uh, the InfoSec Can West hashes dropped out and some other stuff from cra cracking competitions. I decided after running all of my tests with rolling my own rule sets and that sort of thing that I wanted to eliminate the noise. I decided uh, having actual cracking competition stuff was basically just trolling myself. So I deleted that and just made a new list and I, I'll get into how that worked out for me. Uh, I used uh, stock rule sets and mask files that come with Hashcat. Uh, funny story, I used uh, uh, 1.31, and I noticed in whatever version of the CPU version of Hashcat was current at the time that there was a new rule set. And I was like, I could add that, but that's strict. You know, that's not in the GPU version, so I'll just put it off. And then it went in the new version, like three weeks ago. So I had to redraw a third of my slides. And as I said, that's an exercise in pain. Oh, uh, I use Debian Wheezy. Uh, the Hashcat uh, project recommends Ubuntu. Usually whatever the current LTS release is at the time, they say use that because that's what it's developed on. That's There are guys who actually make and sell eight GPU cracking rigs. Like, that's how they make their money. And everybody just uses Ubuntu. If you use something else and have a problem, they basically just make fun of you. <laughs> Are you noticing a trend yet? People making fun of others. Uh, if you're using uh, 
the uh, brand new versions of CUDA Hashcat, you pretty much have to use the NVIDIA.com driver. Uh, I, uh, I was able to get away with using the Debian package version of the NVIDIA driver for a while until the new uh, the newest Hashcat versions came out, and uh, it was just too old, basically. That's the problem with Debian. Once you get towards the end, you know, once the new testing release goes into that freeze, that's around the time everything else in the stable version gets too old to be useful. Attack types I'm going to cover today are uh, the dictionary attack. I'm going to briefly gloss over the combinator attack. And then I'll talk about rules and mask files. The dictionary attack. Uh, it works best with a list of passes from previous breaches. Uh, as I said on the third bullet point, it's pretty much really terrible from an efficiency standpoint. Your cards are going to get just as hot as if you just ran rules. And if you're running one of the really small rule sets you're, and you're doing unsalted hashes, you're not going to have much of a speed difference at all in terms of actual runtime. So if you're doing something like this, don't waste your time with a dictionary unless you're validating everything afterwards, which that really ties into how I became a beta tester. When I was putting the slides together for this, I had in the 1.31 version of Hashcat, I found that I had a bunch of, I say a bunch, but it was probably about one in 10,000 that were just, the found passwords were wrong. They would either be all caps or have the last two characters dropped off in every case. I reported that and Adam thought, you know, maybe it's a bug in CUDA. We talked about it a little bit on IRC and then it was determined that it was a race condition. And he, he's one of those guys, I'm just barely smart enough to talk to the guy. He's he's up to his elbows in massively parallel code. Like whenever he's not at work, he's a really smart guy, is what I'm trying to say. And he said something about uh, CUDA not using atomic time by default. Sounds like a real problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go Nvidia. Uh, as I so helpfully put on this. Okay, I'm still not being cut off in any meaningful way. Oh, uh, I recovered a little over 28% in 12 seconds and 35, almost 36% in 19 seconds with the crack station list. Okay, Combinator. All that does is it takes two, you can specify the same dictionary or two different dictionaries and it just combines every word with every other word. Uh, you can also apply rules, which I'll get into later, to one or both halves. Uh, there's uh, what, Once you get to a certain level, you might want to uh, look into Hashcat utils. Uh, there's a three-way combinator in it that you just pipe the output into Hashcat and it does its magic. Uh, show of hands, anyone in here familiar with Diceware? Okay, Diceware, for everybody other than the two who raised your hands, thank you for being knowledgeable. Over the last 20 years, well, Diceware was created about 20 years ago. Some guy came up with it in, I won't say 1995. Somebody feel like, if somebody feels like heckling me if I'm wrong about that, bring it. <laughs> uh, fact check, feel free to fact check me at any point. Uh, basically, you have uh, Dice, and you roll them, and you have a 37-page PDF, and you might have like one, you might have five ones, and that might be A. Or you might have like 20, you know, two, three, six, four, might be, uh, well, six, four, three, might be some totally different word. And it's just, you pick the word, The Intercept actually wrote a piece about this recently. That's something they use. Uh, you don't, they uh, say don't even bother capitalizing, just add spaces between the words. Uh, they, uh, the guy who came up with Diceware recently said move to seven words or eight if you're really paranoid. Uh, 
given today's technology and just the outlook on storage space, so, uh, you could uh, you could have some fun and make uh, two dictionary. You could make one dictionary out of di the diceware list twice, and then use uh, the three-way uh, combinator to own six character. I mean, six-word diceware passwords. That's just that's just to give a real-world world example of this. Uh, as I say at the bottom, uh, combinator dot rule, which I'll that's in the benchmarks later. It just adds special characters like hyphens and stuff like that. It's not anything special, but you'll see how it still did before I even knew that. Uh, I didn't bother testing this, and I'm sure you guys are, everybody in here can read. <laughs> uh, yeah, I would still, if, if I had actually bothered to do all this, I would still be running, assuming no power outages, no having to stop or any of that. I just really didn't feel like sinking four months into seeing just what Combinator could do, and I didn't feel like working something together with Unix tools to fake my way through it. Now it gets fun. Does anyone rec real quick, does anyone recognize where these example passwords came from? I'll give you a hint, it's pop culture. Anyone? All right, does anyone remember uh, the movie, the silly movie poster for Black Hat? I'm talking about the movie, not the con. Oh, wow. Nothing. Okay. There, there, was this there was this horribly funny poster that was for Black Hat that basically said a Black Hat hacker can crack, and it listed each of these passwords with some extremely long faked time. All of them will crack in less than a second with pretty much any given stock rule set. Uh, I pro in a future revision of this, I might put that a colon just spams the password at Hashcat with no changes. Uh, has anyone in here ever uh, done password cracking before? Alanka, of course you have. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, if you ever messed with rules on uh, John the Ripper or anything like that, Hashcat's really cool in that you can take those rule sets and just use them straight on. You don't have to do any modifications. They're compatible. Uh, I guess I'll explain the examples. C is just capitalize. Uh, the S, A, and at symbol is just, S is substitute. First letter is, I think that explains itself. And then the uh, Dollar sign in the one just appends a one to the end of it. And then at the very bottom, I've got how I determined the number of rules in the next few slides because there were comments, there was white space. And I almost, I, I, I almost screwed up, but I caught myself before I started uh, benchmarking incorrectly. Okay. Uh, I mentioned earlier I had to rework a bunch of slides. Uh, Dive.rule is the reason why. Uh, with it alone, in a little under two hours, I got 74% of everything in the list. Uh, now, a, lo a lot of this is a sad tale of basically uh, once you get into the harder stuff, you have, to you have to throw a lot more time at it, which that's more electricity, more heat. You know, more everything for not a whole lot of benefit. At the very bottom, you'll see best 64. I mean, 60% in 10 seconds. And then for another, you might as well say 15%, it took almost two hours. Uh, that, that theme will repeat itself. Uh, I'm going to take a little bit of time and pause here. This talks a bit of a slow burn at first, but then I swear I pick up later. <laughs> uh, Dive generated and generated to are all randomly generated rules that just happened to work. They were ordered by popularity in terms of what they would solve. Oh, uh, toxic. There's uh, some rule sets that are named toxic, like this one's V1. He's one of the uh, more prolific people in the Hashcat scene. He's got a lot of rule sets named after him. Uh, dead one. Uh, He's kind of the same story. He's no longer with us, but 
he dead one dot rule is his thing. Uh, Rocky thirty thousand. I know I'm going out of order, but whatever. Rocky thirty thousand is basically they took the Rocky list, fed it into the rule script for PAC, which is the password analysis and cracking kit, and ranked those rules by rank the first thirty thousand rules by popularity. Uh, Inside Pro Hash Manager was just ripped straight from Inside Pro. What's up? Question. So you're saying that when they were generated, they analyzed lists of existing passwords and build rules? Yeah, basi basically, the, like, yeah, the Hashcat has a, a, a G flag that generates rules. And yeah, the, I think generated two was based off of generated one. Like, they just fed a bunch of stuff they cracked with generated and did generated two from that. I'm probably going to get chewed out on IRC if that's wrong. And it, I, I, I'm prepared. My flame retardant suit is at home. Uh, some of you are probably wondering about the logical inconsistency with best 64 implying there are 64 different rules having 78 rules. There is a story to that. A lot of this stuff isn't really documented anywhere. You have to ask someone on IRC or on the forums. Uh, as it was explained to me, the Best 64 contest happened about three years ago. They're talking about doing another one. And basically, you have, in, that, in the case of the contest, there was a set hash list and a set dictionary. You could not change those, but you had to change the rules. And whoever got the, and whichever rules did the best made it into best 64. Now the reason there's 78 is because there's 14 rules at the bottom that were awesome for the, uh, the fishbowl test, but in the real world, they were terrible. They just didn't do anything. So they added 14 rules that were actually good in real life and just were like, eh, performance penalty isn't that much. We'll just throw them all in. Oh, specific, all that does, that one's kind of funny when you look at it. It just takes the, it, it assumes at the most 10 uh, character passwords, and it just transposes two, two, uh, two positions. Like if you have a password, it'll take like the P at the beginning and the D at the end and swap them. And it just, it just does that. Still, almost 43%. That's kind of terrible. <laughs> what my personal fa I've already talked about Combinator, so I can move gracefully on from that. Uh, my favorite on this page is the toxic lit, the toxic insert 90, 00 through 99, 1950 to 2050. If you use, uh, your first name and a, a birth year, consider yourself owned. <laughs> Uh, the toggles rules, I should probably explain. This is actually on the wiki now. That's, it wasn't on the wiki before about a week ago. Oh, uh, I have, I'm just gonna move on. Uh, toggle, uh, toggles one just toggles the case on one, uh, character in the first 15 positions. Toggles two, uh, does everything toggles one does, plus it'll toggle two characters in the first 15 positions and of course, that goes up to toggles five. Uh, the leet speak stuff, the next, these three right here, I think those are kind of self explanatory. It's just, again, it's the sad song of getting the easy stuff first and then just wasting time just to get a fraction of a percentage. Uh, the other toxic stuff, I'd, I didn't really research that. I just know Toxic wrote them, and I didn't bother to ask about those. But my personal favorite on this is oscommerce.rule. Oh, uh, obviously it's la it's in dead last here at 6.56%. And I actually asked, why is the, why does this rule set even exist? And I was told, apparently uh, among the skid crowd, hacking OS Commerce websites and not grabbing the salts with the hashes is a thing. Leave it to 12-year-olds to get it wrong. 
they, they, they don't exactly get to hide behind the excuse of, oh, the admin typed cookie before I could grab them and I got locked out. That's not going to fly. Uh, basically, what oscommerce.rule does is brute the, ha uh, brute the salt, I mean. It just compensates for script kitty stupidity. Again, it goes back to if you're, R if you're using this to RM script kitties, you have my blessing. Okay, Crackstation, as you guys probably remember, is about five times larger. It's only good for about another, anywhere from about five to seven percent more passwords. Oh, as you can see, I got really, I mentioned 80 percent earlier as my goal. I got really close to that just off of dive.rule. And of course, I went from just under two hours to a little over nine. I've already talked about the uh, etymology of some of these list names. I think I can move on. Uh, oh, one thing I forgot to mention, the sp uh, speed ratings, I thought those were averages. That's not the case. That's uh, just the speed that ha uh, Hashcat is running at at the time it stops. I didn't find that out until about three weeks ago, and I just decided to keep it, just to show how different that is from the stated benchmarks. Best 64 actually dropped. That was the surprise here to me. I thought that rule set would do better, but it didn't. And I haven't, I haven't really investigated that. I probably should, just so I can speak intelligently about that in the future. Oh, let's see. What have I? Uh, yeah, it's ba uh, like I was saying, five to seven percent. The toggle, toggles five does about. I'm going to say 5% better. Uh, on the next slide, Toggles 4 has the same percentage, but it only got 11 more hashes. Oh, uh, OS Commerce got a whole 2% bump. Woohoo for OS Commerce. So, question This is the same rule set with a different dictionary? Yeah, that's all it is. I, I, I should have made that clear. Uh, this is basically just all I changed was the dictionary. Hash list stayed the same, rule stayed the same. I just swapped out the third piece. All right. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I just basically did sort you and did uh, the word count. I got seventy six point eighty seven percent just with the rock you stuff, and eighty one point seventy four percent with crack station human only. After combining that, you could see it. It really what? It, yeah, I really get into where it doesn't really benefit me much. I mean, I only had you know a tenth of a point. You might as well say in terms of a bump. Now it's time for uh, getting creative and not just blindly using other people's stuff. Well, there's still a bit. Wait, I'm getting ahead of myself. Never mind. Maybe five minutes from now. Uh, ma mask attacks. Uh, this is basically a more intelligent form of brute forcing. I forgot to put this on here, but if you want, if you just for some reason decided you wanted to do an entire key space like all the eight character passwords, you would use a question mark and an A eight times, and that would be your mask. Uh, a lot of people, and you'll see this later. Most of this list uses lowercase and digits. Uh, if you know, for example, that I don't know, you might have uh, a wi you might have a router from your ISP, and the Wi-Fi password is set to a certain uh, standard by default. You know, it uses like four uppercase letters, and then it uses a string of numbers. If you w if you want to be evil, going back to the uh, Wi-Fi stealing point, you can use that knowledge to your advantage. Oh. Uh, for random stuff, there's the using hex. Uh, I think my example is kind of self-explanatory, if painful to read because it's a bunch of question marks with letters. Oh, uh, you can also create custom character sets and something else. I've, oh, I'm sorry. Can you randomize that string, or does it have to be in the correct order? Uh, correct order. Uh, you can make your own mask sets, which I experimented with a little bit. Oh. Uh, that can that can be painful to run because 
okay, like that. I don't, I don't even know how long that would take, but you could run through like the five character key space and use all of your GPU for a few minutes, depending on the algorithm. Or you could do specific, like, I know I want to try all lowercase for five characters, all digits, and the card gets starred for uh, possibilities and doesn't run as fast. That happens. Uh, I talk about generating mask sets in a few slides. I promise I'll get to that. That's not really random, though, and that doesn't, that doesn't address your question, strictly speaking, but I think it'll be close enough. Uh, another thing, there are also uh, character sets in the Hashcat zip for, uh, I won't say Russian, French, German. I won't say there's another language, but I can't remember it off the top of my head, and I don't have the files here. Those are my, ma I, there are uh, seven, there are like nine different uh, mask sets. I only ran uh, the first three. I don't know the story behind how these were made. Uh, again, you can see I get the lion's share in 20 minutes and then spend five hours getting a little bit more and then 14 hours not really doing all that well. All the low hanging fruit's pretty much gone from here. Uh, Oh God, I think that slide's wrong. Wait, no, it's not. It's not. Uh, at this point, I'm at uh, I'm at the same level Dagmar was with his <coughs> HP 9000 and people who picked terrible passwords that were probably under five characters back in the 90s. <laughs> Break time. When I said it was 100% antsy, that was, strictly speaking, that wasn't completely true, just because I had to throw in a chip tune. Uh, if any of you know Arnie from Data Thrash, I see a few uh, head nods. I DM'd him on Twitter. I was like, look, I'm doing this weird presentation. I need an intermission chip tune. Can you whip something up? And he just referred me to Trash 80's Girl from Intermission. And that was the last 20 seconds of it. I actually listened to that more times than I would like to admit while drawing this. <laughs> yeah, I, I went into this phase where I was just working on this in the middle of the night, playing chip tunes and pretending the rest of the world didn't exist. Uh, th this is this is where things got. Th this is where I started to have to use my brain. Oh, uh, I took uh, first. Well, I'd say I took both holy wow. Strictly speaking, that's wrong. Did my mic just go out? No. Okay, good. Oh, uh, I took both holy wows and ran them through pack. Oh, uh, <laughs> that uh, three gig uh, holy wow uh, text file generated 50 gigs of rules. Uh, the second version did 15. After I did uh, the sword on them, I was in, I ended up with 48 and 12 gigabytes worth of ranked rules. Uh, Word of warning, if anybody in here is a, wants to attempt to do that, pack will fall over and die if you throw this many passwords at it. It'll make a file, but it will fall over and die when it goes to sort them. You're going to have to use Unix tools to do that yourself. Just sort uh, RNK1, you'll be good to go. Oh, uh, I got to 88.31%, and... Obviously, I've got here. I'm just reading slides at this point, which is probably annoying some of you. But who's ready for more ANSI spreadsheets? <laughs> I dropped. The, I had to make. I had to make a lot of artistic sacrifices here just to get all the information in. I think I did. I think I struck a pretty good balance, though. Uh, keep in mind the V1 and V2 columns are basically just. Rules ranked by popularity, and I took the top ten. It, it, it's not expressed anywhere on here, but this is the top ten from uh, what I found with Rock U. I didn't really do much better, but I did better enough to make it interesting. Uh, generated, of course, I got stomped on that. Uh, dive, I 
that was kind of a waste of my time. Uh, I utterly stomped uh, Generator 2. Like, that's, that's kind of embarrassing. Oh, uh, well, Best 64, I, that was a complete failure. That's a, it's, a, it's just the fewer I had, the fewer rules I was competing against, I couldn't, ke I couldn't keep up with the people who came before me. But once I started throwing more uh, rules at the problems and got to play with bigger numbers, I came out ahead. So what's the run time? Oh, it's about the same. Maybe a little faster because some of the rules are computationally simpler. I didn't bother including that. Like I said, I had to make sacrifices. Uh, it's kind of the same story here. I didn't do a whole lot better. Uh, Best 64 dropped off of there because it did so poorly with this list, so I got, I got to move forward. And this slide actually makes me look a little bit better, almost. Except on Inside Pro, Passwords Pro. I'm just going to let that top part speak for itself. I just want that to sink in. Does anyone in here not understand that reference? Okay, read H.P. Lovecraft. It's a, it's a Lovecraft reference. Oh, this was for, uh, this was mask sets. I basically said screw it, kind of like I did with Combinator. I took uh, any mask set that had over 100,000 matches and dumped it in a file. Oh, uh, like I said there, I've got... I had a, uh, a bunch of 20 plus character masks. All of those were like 20 lowercase, 21 lowercase. Uh, if uh, the math notation is wrong, Ranger Z is right here. Please pelt him with rotten fruit. <laughs> yeah, I asked him. I asked him about that because I was like, I do not want to look stupid here. Can you please help me here? And he said, This is close to what you want. Roll with it. Uh, most of this slide was actually uh, done over the phone with a friend of mine who goes by no fault. He calculated the 21 character lowercase masks would take 21 around 21 trillion years. Uh, that impossibly large number uh, is 518 undecillion. <laughs> uh, you would need if you're going to crack all this in 180 days. Well. Not crack it, but to exhaust all the possibilities, you would need a little over 33 zeta hashes per second. There aren't enough GPUs on this planet for that at the moment. Give give it maybe 50 years. I cheated hard on this. This this could actually I was going to do the others, but the output I got was just weird. So the holy wow uh, lines could be wrong as well. I just stuck with what I actually figured out, uh, what I actually ran on my own, and the two holy wows. And I had 88 that in the holy wow v2 that were that matched over 100k passwords, and I had 354 with uh, v1. As you can see, only about a six percent difference. And then for those of you who are into basically doing things with commands that are barely readable. I've got the cheat sheet at the bottom. <laughs> I, 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 I couldn't. I couldn't really make that. A, I couldn't make that a one-liner for artistic reasons. I would have. I, I, I uh, only had 80 characters to play with, and I wasn't about to compromise on that. So it's a two-liner. Okay. Uh, other than being more prepared next time, <laughs> keyboard walks. Uh, or something I could talk about in another talk, uh, or another revision of this, or whatever. And that's just like ASDF, QWERTY, just sequential characters on a keyboard, any direction. Wouldn't, wouldn't those passwords probably already appear in the more Most likely. Yeah. Uh, there's actually a keyboard walk in a few slides. I, I, I'll, I'll bring that up again. Uh, then uh, Toxic talks about Mises attacks a lot. I, th I think my slide pretty much illustrates what it is. It's basically like a different version of Combinator where you insert 
every word into every other word at different positions. Oh, I could have I could have done some uh, regex and probably figured that out, but I didn't f I didn't really want to get into that. I had an, I, I thought I had enough more than enough material as it was. Uh, Prince is basically Adam's new baby. It just it, it just does automated stuff. I ran it for about 24 hours and only got 50 percent. So I just mo I just moved on. I was going to do a slide about it, but decided not to. Uh, Pack does uh, a lot of cool stuff. It doesn't. You can't just. You you can do more than just generate rules and masks. You can actually uh, get stats on uh, the passwords you have. It's really cool in that regard. And I've the, like the next few slides are just stuff I ripped straight from Pack. I added some colors for just because I could. I mean, this has been an exercise, and I think anyway, tasteful restraint in terms of the colors. I, I, I was going to get I was going to get really crazy at the end. I forgot to mention this. The whole reason I validated my found passwords and found all the buggy ones was because I wanted to have a surprise ending with all the with everything that I found that wasn't ever found before, which I didn't think would happen because like 98 percent of this list has already been cracked. It's pretty well understood, but I thought just in case I do, I'm going to put in. Anything I find on the last slide and make every, and just make the most eye destroying color combinations for every character I could. And that led down the accidental beta tester side quest. Oh. And then, of course, I'm going to do credits. And then, if you guys want to ask questions, throw things at me, whatever, we'll get to that. All right. As you can see here, most people used eight character passwords. Oh, uh, I could probably, you know, if I ever decide to rework this presentation again, I could probably make like a little ANSI graph that shows like bars for percentages. That's just an idea. But mo most of them, as you can see, are between six and 12 characters. I think it's the 26 character ones, the epic keyboard walk. Okay, this this slide kind of, wait, is it this one? Yeah, this one kind of angered me a little bit because it, some of them aren't exact, wait, no, it's not this one. This one's, uh, this slide is okay. This slide doesn't make me want to punch my monitor. <laughs> uh, lower alphanumeric passwords are the by far the vast majority. And then you throw in lower alpha, and you get 77% of everything. Uh, I don't even know what Battlefield Heroes is. Maybe I could go to the Minecraft table and ask around. Who knows? But its users don't pick good passwords. And th this, is, this is not uncommon at all. It's it's not. I've looked at I've looked at a bunch of other lists just kind of informally. Nothing I felt like putting in here, but yeah, it's pretty much the same song and dance with any other breach. Okay, I know this is just like all digits, all lower, and so on. I didn't uh, look into like mixed case, but the upper. Yeah, the uh, upper case one, that is one giant keyboard walk. You just, you start at Q and go to the right until you run out of letters and keep move and then move down a row and that's it. My favorite on here though is the 12 stars. <laughs> yeah, that's like that's like perfect shoulder surfing protection. Or at least that's probably what the uh, person who picked that thought. Okay, this is a slide that makes me want to punch my monitor. Yeah, I'm just going to move past that. This one, this one to me is more readable. Oh, <laughs> yeah, that's entirely subjective. As you can see here, the takeaway is all the popular mask sets are either lowercase, digital, or some combination of the two. There are there's pretty much no use of lowercase in this particular dump at all. To the, 
uppercase. I mean uppercase, I'm sorry. Thanks for correcting me. Oh, uh, to the point I really looked at it at first. I, I was kind of looking at it informally, just watch it, literally just watching the passwords spam at me. I just, t I just tailed the uh, out file and watched it. I was like, I don't see any uppercase uh, letters in this. I thought maybe they pulled the opposite of eHarmony and disabled uh, uppercase passes and just, you know, did string to lower without telling anybody. <laughs> eHarmony did the opposite. They did string to upper. Yeah, it, it <laughs> yeah, your giggles are well deserved. Okay, this is the, if I ever uh, update this talk, I'm going to have to make some really hard choices because this is every, uh, this is every year Splash Data has released uh, passwords. Like the, they do a top 25 list uh, for art, because of art, I only did uh, the top 10. Yeah, and I, and I color coded them. I decided since I couldn't have, I couldn't have my surprise ending, I would do this this way. Oh, I do want to point out one thing. I don't have this stuff written down. I just, it's trapped in my head. One, two, three, four, five, six is only, now I know this is like, real, this looks really terrible, but this is not representative of the larger dump. There's four, remember, there's 423,000 unique passes out of 550,000. Of those, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, it's about a little over 2,500 passwords. Still terrible, but not as abysmal as one might think. Password was only used by a, about 750 people. I would have to, I'd have to look to get the actual number. Quir and then from there, it drops like QWERTY and one through nine were used by about 500 people. And by the time we get to the hilariously secure password of one, two, three, one, two, three, only about 200 people use that one. I'm just saying it's not, it's not all terrible. References, uh, of course, hashcat.net, that's where you would go for everything. Uh, the events page is basic, well, the events directory is where other talks go. Uh, mine will probably go there, but I'll say now, Everybody, this is probably the worst of all the Hashcat talks. This is this is pretty this is pretty basic stuff. I've talked about the first eighty percent, but guys like uh, Dioxide, Adam, Toxic, pretty much everybody else that's ever done a talk talks about owning the last twenty percent. Uh, the wiki. Before you ever ask the first question, check the wiki. It's been getting a lot of updates because people are tired of uh, question, the same questions coming up all the time. Like the, uh, I explained the, uh, I explained how. T I'm sorry. Do you have a question? No, that's good. Oh, sorry. Reptile brain kicked in there. I saw motion. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the wiki is. Uh, they have an FAQ page now, and that's where I got the. Uh, Everything I talked about with the toggles rules, that was never really documented in one set place until about a week ago. Uh, snipview.com, that was where I got Undecillion from. Uh, the sprawl.org is where you go to get pack. Uh, I think the splash data links kind of explain themselves. They couldn't stick with the same directory and naming convention across years, and I thought that was kind of interesting, but that's just me. And then at the bottom, that's my personal domain. I took uh, this presentation, the chiptune, because LibreOffice won't let you do actual, like, embedding music into a presentation the way I did and have it work across computers. Uh, a little readme file that's basically a file manifest. There's a, a PNG of an ANSI scroller version of this. Uh, some of you probably noticed, like here at the bottom, you see where it's, it, it's like all, you see right here where it's like this bar just keeps running? <laughs> There's a story behind that. I made, I made the scroller version. This is like one giant art piece, and I just cut each slide out. That's the whole purpose for the bar, so I knew where to cut. 
And I just made images and then made those the backgrounds. Like I said, an exercise in pain. Uh, I also, for those who are interested in such things, included uh, the rule sets that I generated, uh, both the V1 and V2 versions. I used the, I used uh, however many, like 123,000 that I used from Dive. That's what you get today if you go to that. I promise there aren't any zero days or anything like that. I know my handle kind of sketches some people out. Oh, that's all there is to say about that. Now I get to thank people. I already mentioned Arnie and Trash80. Oh, Adam, of course, I've name dropped him a lot. If it wasn't if it wasn't for him, this talk wouldn't be possible at all. Uh, ben, he was the blank slate, for a lack of a better term. I explained I explained the concept of what I was talking about over pizza at a uh, Nashville Linux users group meeting, and he was just mystified, like he just couldn't believe it. Uh, Dagmar, who I mentioned earlier, and who's probably going to want to punch me when he watches this video on YouTube because <laughs> I made an age joke. Oh my God! Uh, I, 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 <laughs> I remember that when I'm missing teeth. Uh, uh, he said he kind of set the bar when he said 87 percent. Obviously, people have gotten more intelligent about uh, making passwords because he he spent an hour with an HP 9000 Unix box cracking stuff with some CPU cracker back in the late 90s, whereas I used a modern GPU, well, a, about $150 video card two years ago is what it, would, what, what it would have retailed for. And I spent a lot more time, but I got a lot more uh, tries per second than he ever would have gotten. Uh, I, Felix, wrote Pack. Uh, no Fault and Ranger Z are responsible for that Lovecraft reference slide. Oh, uh, I already mentioned Trash 80, so I can skip on. Uh, anybody feels like pestering me for any reason, once this talk is over, there's a bunch of random stuff you can use. Uh, I'm a big fan of PGP. Uh, if, you si if you send me death threats or conspiracies, I'll probably paste bin and tweet them, just because that sort of thing is hilarious. Oh. Uh, Twitter, I don't use. I don't use too much. I'm kind of. I try to stay low volume. I was one of those people who just did infosec retweets for a while, and I was like, okay, I just need to SDFU and stick to my, you know, tweeting my own stuff. I didn't want to be too noisy. Uh, on GitHub, uh, I did a fork of uh, Tor Relay Bootstrap just to make running bridge notes easier. And I've got a, I've got uh, some other stuff I've forked that I haven't bothered to clean up. What's up? Oh, awesome! I'm almost done, anyways. Uh, and GitHub again on GitHub. I've got uh, I called it Paranoid Prosody. Basically, the TLDR version: start with a clean Debian box, run the script, have your own private Jabber server that basically just gives the finger to the man. If you want, if you care about that, just. What? What's your handle? <laughs> I'm going to start throwing stuff. The end. Okay, uh, can I turn this? Okay. All right. Uh, personally, uh, I played. I, I uh, grabbed some cheap dollar store dice and some Chessex dice and messed with diceware a bit, but I just don't trust the you know the whole thing with oh use spaces and don't use caps. That that'd probably be okay for now, but I, I, I'm one of those people. I like to think 10, 15 years in the future. Uh, that's why I have a, a 4,096 uh, 4, bit RSA key. Uh, I just don't trust current. I, I just don't trust the current standards. I go, I go harder than what anybody recommends. Uh, personally, if it's an account I don't care about, I'll use uh, PWGen. It's in the Debian packages, and I'll just generate like a 16-character password. If it's something I care about a little more, 
I'll go at least, just, I'm not going to tell you how many characters I use, but at least 32. It starts with an uppercase. <laughs> no, it, 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 it's random, and I just, I just dump that. Most people would use a password manager. I just use encrypted text files. Do you have an, you have an opinion on LastPass? Uh, not really. I've never. I've personally never used it. Uh, something else I forgot to mention. Uh, with password recovery. Uh, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. You can go ahead, but my question is, uh, with Hashcat, uh, how does the system keep from reattempting the same combinations oh, throughout an entire possibility set following those rules, or how are those rules applied? Oh, uh, with a with a di if, with a dictionary. Uh, if you're, it, you can actually run into the same thing being tried over again. That, and that's a question of really just optimizing your dictionaries. That's not really something I don't think they control. A anything else? Uh, if you guys have any other questions, I'll probably be, uh, Using the uh, t Tennessee coats annotated as toilet paper in the lock picking village. <laughs>